Hi guys, hello everyone, Jens here from All Star Space. As you all know, I'm home in the corporate world and I therefore like to review and see tech from a very different angle. For me, it is all about the outcome rather than the specs. All the specs are very important, it doesn't mean anything when the outcome you're looking for is just not there. So, today is all about the eGPU and why I have chosen to ditch the Blackmagic design eGPU over a Razer Core X together with a Vega 64. Let's start with my current setup. So guys, I have this beautiful 27 inch LG 5K ultra fine display plugged into my Blackmagic eGPU with an Radeon Pro 580 with 8 gigs of memory. This beast has two Thunderbolt and four regular USB A type ports. I also have my 15 inch MacBook Pro with a 2.9 gigahertz i9 processor, 32 gigs of RAM and 2 terabyte SSD storage option. Now I think this is a really nice and clean setup to work with. Personally, I'm a big fan of modular workstations rather than just having an iMac Pro or an iMac sitting on your desk. So guys, you have seen the current setup. So how come I am changing my Blackmagic eGPU? Well, very simple answer, Final Cut Pro. My wife started her YouTube channel four years ago when she is running into performance issues with her 5K 27 inch spec on iMac, the regular iMac, not the Pro version. Sometimes a 10 minute 4K video with color grading and added effects can be tough on any machine and since the iMac Pro is using the Vega graphics card, why not try out by how much our workflow can be improved? Another aspect of changing from a Blackmagic eGPU is simply put, pricing. We are by no means tight and love the Apple ecosystem. However, when looking at the upcoming eGPU Pro, which has the same chassis than my current Blackmagic, my eyes start to water. It has been delayed into 2019 and will come with a Radeon RX Vega 56, which can be found in the basic model of the iMac Pro. It costs an eye-watering 1000 359 euros. Yes, 1359. It looks nice and serves as a USB hub, which is convenient, but double the price of a regular eGPU setup? I don't know. This seems crazy to me. I think Apple must have recognized this and therefore added eGPU support to macOS in the latest version of Mojave. Nice move, Apple. So here we go. I ordered the Radeon RX Vega 64 with 8GB and Razer Core X external graphic enclosure with a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C and a cable power cord. It is obviously bigger than the Blackmagic, but I'm happy to make this trade-off. The Razer Core X is a separate unit, which is great as this gives me the possibility of future upgrades should this be needed. Once you unbox the unit, all you need to do is remove a plate and pull out the inside of the enclosure. Remove the protective cover and a small plastic sort of protection. This will be the place where the Vega 64 will be connected. It comes with an eGPU sizing guide, simply making this easy for everyday users like me. Take the Vega 64 and connect it to the Razer X core enclosure. There are only a couple of cables left that needs putting in now, however it can get slightly fiddly with them. Nothing major though. Once all is connected, push the inside of the enclosure back in and we are ready to go. There are two cables to plug in now. Number one is the power, number two is the Thunderbolt 3 connection to your device, in my case a MacBook Pro. Make sure that your device is either close to the unit or you get a longer cable. When you do so, please make sure to get a Thunderbolt 3 active support cable. Everything is now plugged in and ready to go. And as I mentioned earlier, although I'm not into specs that much, I'm doing a Geekbench OpenCL test for all dedicated GPUs. The built-in dedicated 560, the Blackmagic 580 and the new Vega 64. It will be nice to see how they perform and what the difference will be. The internal 560 has scored with 62,000, the Blackmagic 580 has a score of roughly 112,000 and the new installed Vega 64 has a score of 142,000. This is roughly a 30% increase over the Blackmagic 580 Pro. This may not seem much to some, but what I can tell you is that cutting this video with the Vega 64 was smooth like butter. I could hear and feel it working. The performance was just amazing. What did it cost me? It cost me roughly 700 euros which is effectively half of the upcoming Blackmagic eGPU Pro with a slightly weaker Vega 56. However, I made two small trade-offs. Number one, I have to plug in two cables now into my MacBook Pro, one for the eGPU and one for the LG 5K Ultrafine. Number two, the enclosure is much bigger and it takes more space. 
However, would I want to change it? Not in a heartbeat. After having this incredible smooth butter-like performance when using Final Cut Pro, there is no other way. Seeing is believing. I can highly recommend this setup for anyone who is interested to increase their workflow when editing videos. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, give me a like or leave me a comment. If you loved it, subscribe for more simple reviews that just focus on the outcome rather than on the specs. I hope to see you next time and have a wonderful night. Jens here from Alsa Space. Peace out.